Hi, my name is Logan. I'm a mountain guide here at Alpenglow Expeditions, and today I'd like to talk about packing for an international expedition. Although I'm packing for the Ecuador Climbing School today, this video will help you choose gear and pack for any of our trips. As we go through the clothing and equipment, make sure you reference the gear list from your specific trip, as different mountains require different equipment. Every time I pack, I divide up my gear into a few key categories. Starting off, we've got footwear, gloves, and headwear. We've got all my clothing here. We've got the camping gear, technical climbing gear, and then general travel items. I've got two big waterproof duffels. You wanna pack your climbing pack inside the duffel as it can get damaged by baggage handling machines during travel. I like to place all my delicate or breakable items near the center and pad them with my sleeping bag, clothes, and other soft items. Make sure your bags are clearly labeled with your contact info and locked with TSA compliant luggage locks. If you've stuck to this gear list, you'll have no trouble getting your bags under 50 pound, the 50 pound airline limit. Typically, we'll leave one of these bags in a secure storage location at our hotel with everything that we don't need in the mountains, and the other bag joins us on our adventure. Again, please follow this gear list for your specific trip when packing, and feel free to reach out to the Alpenglow office with any and all questions as you get ready for your expedition. Starting with headwear, um, on every trip, I'll make sure I have a, a ball cap, got one on my head here, uh, and sunglasses. Um, sunglasses, they don't have to be marketed as glacier glasses, but what's really important is they're, uh, they have dark lenses, they're UV protective, and they're, they're wrap around with, um, with a nice tight fit to the side of your face. When we're up high on snow-covered mountains, especially if, if they're high altitude, the sun is intensely bright and we, it's really important to take care of our eyes. Um, and if the weather turns south or if it gets really, really windy, I've got a pair of goggles here. Um, both the glasses and the goggles, you'll notice I have a carrying case, so they're protected for traveling uh, to your country, uh, but also in your pack. Um, if it's dark out, you want your sunglasses to be in there for dawn, but you don't want them to, to break. So make sure you have a case for both of these things. Uh, for when the temperatures get cold, I've got a beanie here, of course, and a um, couple of buffs. These are fantastic. If you're not familiar with buffs, um, it's just a thin neck gaiter, and they're great for the cold, uh, cold weather, but also intense sun, and you can wear them a bunch of different ways, so I highly recommend um, taking a look at some buffs. Um, if it does get really, really cold, what I might add to this is a balaclava, and a balaclava is a fleece neck gaiter that covers part of your face, and it's actually warmer than buff, uh, buffs and hats combined. Um, so this is my kit. I'll bring it on every single trip. Uh, moving down to gloves here, um, again, a, a standard setup is a thin pair of gloves, a mid-weight pair of gloves, and, my, and these big monsters right here. So uh, these thin guys, they are waterproof, but there's, there's very little insulation in them. Um, leather, very comfortable. I'll wear, these are really nice to wear on the lower mountain uh, to protect your hands and when it gets a little cold. Um, these guys here are, these might be comparable to your average ski or snowboard glove. They're waterproof, they're warm, and um, I'll wear these uh, mostly during the climb itself. Um, so these are kind of your main gloves. And then these guys, uh, oftentimes I don't even pull these out. These are super warm, insulated monster gloves. Um, you must have them on any high altitude climb though. If I don't wear them, they'll be in my pack, uh, just like the parka over there, it'll be in the bottom of my pack. Um, so super warm, totally waterproof, and uh, they have a nice big cuff to go over your jacket. Um, so again, light, mid and heavyweight gloves. Moving down to my feet, I'm bringing two pairs of ankle socks for wearing with my trail shoes and two pairs of thicker warm socks to wear with my mountain boots. Personally, I don't use liner socks, but some people do like them. You should spend time in your boots so you know what feels good and what keeps your feet warm and blister free. For footwear, I always bring these La Sportiva Bushido trail running shoes for town days and acclimatization hikes. For a place like Ecuador, I bring my La Sportiva Nepals for the climb. A warm single boot is fine for peaks in Ecuador, just make sure they fit well and aren't too tight. If you know that you have trouble with cold feet, you might consider a double boot for these types of peaks. Always check your equipment list for specific recommendations. Um, okay, so starting, uh, we've got our merino wool base layers, long sleeve. I've got my short sleeve shirt right here, also merino. Uh, we've got our mid-weight fleece. This one's hooded, it doesn't need to be, but uh, something to think about. 
And this is the Ignite Light Flux. It's a thin synthetic puffy jacket, um, really breathable, fantastic layer. It's definitely a guide's favorite. Um, over here we've got basically soft shells and hard shells. So you'll notice I've got soft shell pants and hard shell pants. Same thing with the jackets. This is my hard shell jacket and my soft shell jacket. I'll spend more time in these soft shells, all the way to the summit even, uh, if the weather's nice. Uh, but I'll make sure to keep my hard shells with me. Um, these guys, they have a full side zip so I can put them off or, or uh, excuse me, put them on or take them off uh, in the day without taking off my boots or crampons or anything like that. Um, all, all three of these jackets are hooded, uh, which is a really nice uh, feature to have if the weather comes in. And moving over here, we've got our, our big puffy layers. So uh, a must is this big down parka. And even if I'm not planning on using this thing, it's always gonna be with me in the bottom of my pack. But uh, on most high altitude climbs, you're gonna put it on. If you're not climbing, at least at your layer breaks. Um, needs to be hooded, needs to be nice and thick and high quality down so it's compressible. Um, this, is your, this is your haven against the, uh, the elements if it gets really cold. Uh, if anyone out there is, uh, knows that you get a little more cold than some other people, I definitely recommend bringing a pair of puffy pants. Um, same, just like the, uh, the shell pants, we want these to have full side zips so you can take them off uh, in the afternoon when it gets warm, again, without taking your harness and your boots off um, or untying from the rope. Um, I typically don't climb with these, but uh, if you do get cold, highly recommended. To finish off the mountain clothes, uh, I want to bring a pair of shorts and pants. Both of these should be synthetic fibers um, so they can get wet and dry quickly. And uh, finally, you know, we're going to spend a lot of time in towns and also going out to some nice dinners. So I definitely recommend bringing a few nice, nice items of clothes. Uh, cotton is fine, of course. I've got a couple button shirts here, a few t-shirts, and a pair of jeans. Uh, these are great for being in town and also traveling. So make sure you remember that. So to start off um, with camping gear, let's talk about sleeping bags. Uh, on this particular trip, I'm bringing a 20 degree down bag because um, I'll be staying in a refuge. Uh, but if we're camping or uh, on different mountains, you're going to have to have a zero or minus 20. So make sure you remember to, to follow along with your gear list. Um, equally important is a compression stuff sack so you can fit it in your pack. Um, sometimes I'll use the sleeping bag loose to pack uh, more delicate equipment in the, um, in the duffel bag. Uh, other times I'll be really tight on room and I'll, I'll have to put it in the compression stack. Uh, when we store the bag for long periods of time, we don't store it in your compression sack, store it in the big, loose, um, large stuff sack that comes with your bag. On this trip, I'll be bringing two backpacks. Uh, this here is, the, is a lightweight day pack. In this case, it's an Eddie Bauer bacon. I'll use this for as my carry-on pack and also for exploring cities and maybe some acclimatization hikes. Lightweight and simple is fine for this one. And then, of course, I've got my mountain pack. Uh, 45 to 55 liters is, is about right for most of the uh, expeditions we run. In this case, I've got the Eddie Bauer Alpine Sisu 50. Um, it's a good general purpose alpine climbing pack. Um, and this is what we'll be wearing on summit day. Okay, let's talk about technical climbing gear next. Um, most of our climbing schools and, and honestly most of the peaks we climb in the world, um, we're going to start with just a general pair of steel mountaineering crampons. Um, there's three different types of, of, of uh, attachment systems these crampons have. You have uh, fully automatic, semi-automatic, or strap-on. These are semi-automatic. Um, if you are going to buy a pair of crampons, you might consider fully automatic crampons that actually clip into the, the toe and heel welts of a pair of boots. Um, one important thing is uh, you're definitely going to want um, uh, anti-bot plates or these plat. You can see these orange plates in there. That'll keep snow from sticking to your boot late in the afternoon when things warm up. And uh, you also want horizontal or flat front points. Um, unless you're climbing steep waterfall ice or, or maybe a big uh, technical climb like Alpamayo, um, all these mountains that we climb, we just want horizontal uh, front points. They're going to climb much better in, uh, in the snow and alpine ice conditions that we find up there. Um, moving on to an ice axe. Um, you're going to want a 55 to 65 centimeter general mountaineering ice axe. This one's a little bit more technical than you need for most trips. Um, but the important aspects of, a, of, of an axe for most of these mountains, you want a, you want a steel head. Um, you definitely want an adze. You don't want a hammer or what we might call an ice tool. Um, and it needs to be somewhat comfortable to hold. Mo most of the time, we're going to be using these ice axes as a walking axe. As opposed to swinging it in technical climbing, um, we're going to be using it as a walking axe and in case we need to self-arrest. Um, so steel head, 55 to 65 centimeters general mountaineering axe. Uh, harness, think lightweight. 
Um, we're not going to be hanging in these harnesses like you might when you're rock climbing or ice climbing. Um, so nice and lightweight is fine. Um, what we want to have is uh, a belay loop. We want to have a belay loop. Uh, gear loops are really handy and adjustable leg loops as well as we adjust up and down our layering throughout the day if you throw on a pair of puffy pants or uh, rain shells or something like that. To round out our technical kit, uh, we've got a pair of non-locking carabiners, uh, a pair of locking carabiners, a blade of ice, and our Prusik material. And finally, the helmet. Um, lightweight mountaineering helmet is what we want. Um, the new modern foam helmets with a very thin plastic shell are fantastic. Um, very comfortable, very light. Um, they are susceptible to cracking and getting damaged, so it's, uh, when we're wearing them and using them, but also when we're packing them in the duffel bags, uh, make sure they're padded really, really well. And it's pretty crucial to have these headlamp um, straps uh, because you'll be climbing many, many hours in the dark with your headlamp on your head, so make sure, you, make sure you've got those. And finally, isn't exactly technical gear, but um, a walking stick or a trekking pole. Uh, I almost always bring one, or, or at least one. Uh, some people like two, that's fine, but uh, make sure it's collapsible. The three section collapsible is fine, and they're fantastic both on a glacier and also on the approaches and descents, so <clears throat> something to consider here. Um, so finally, there's a few other items that you'll want to consider for international travel. Um, toiletries here, I like to keep them pretty simple. Um, obviously, I've got some hand sani, lots of sunscreen, and uh, some SPF uh, lip balm, um, small toothbrush, toothbrush and toothpaste, uh, some camp soap and a, and a camp towel. Women should consider a pee funnel while traveling in the mountains. They're a fantastic uh, item of convenience, so look into that. Moving over to electronics. Again, I try to keep it relatively simple and compact, but there's a few items that, are, that really uh, make our day a little easier. Uh, first of all would be a, a remote battery pack or an uh, extra battery pack. Um, this is about 10,000 milliamp hours, and it's got a couple of USB um, connections, so I can charge my phone with that. I could also charge my headlamp if it's rechargeable, uh, top up the battery of the camera, things like that. Um, so great for traveling and also uh, out in the mountains where there's no power. And obviously you're gonna want our, I got a pair of headphones and a charging cable there. Headlamp, super important for climbing. Um, modern headlamps should be tiltable, and they should obviously have LED bulbs. Um, the days of halogen bulbs are over and dead. So if you have one of those, uh, why don't you pick up one of these new modern ones. Uh, make sure to bring an extra pair of batteries. Um, if it is rechargeable, um, highly recommended to bring a second rechargeable battery or one of these guys, um, uh, just in case it dies. And um, I've got my watch here, Kindle, uh, much more lightweight than, a, uh, than an actual paperback book. And camera. So this is the Sony RX100. It's a great little point and shoot camera, nice and small. It takes fantastic photos and video. Um, this, is the, this is an older one, this is the Mark III. I think they're up to a Mark VII now. Um, doesn't matter too much. Highly recommended uh, that you guys take a look at these high quality point and shoot cameras. Um, <clears throat> it slips into this little case and I can clip it directly to my harness or I can put it inside my jacket if it's really cold out. If you are really into photography and um, you're considering bringing a more substantial system uh, with uh, detachable lenses and things, no problem, that's a great idea. Some of the uh, countries and places that we travel are some of the most photogenic areas anywhere in the world. Um, so no problem there. I don't recommend taking that sort of a system <clears throat> on summit day though, on the big climbs. It's he heavy and bulky and it's gonna take away from your experience. So still consider bringing on a, uh, along a small point and shoot camera. I've got a small first aid kit here. Um, this is maybe a little bigger than, than, you, than you need to bring. I'm obviously going to be guiding, so I carry a bit more. Um, us guides are going to have uh, substantial first aid kits and high altitude medicines um, and supervision from our expedition doctor, Monica. But it's still convenient to have your own personal kit. Um, you might bring your own Diamox and some antibiotics, uh, band-aids, things like that. Um, it's just more convenient to be able to have those things at, at your disposal. Um, so any questions on the first aid, make sure to give us a call here. Passports, you don't want to forget that. Uh, make sure you have at least six months validity on these things. Most countries in the world will not let you enter if you have less than six months validity. If you uh, need a visa to enter the country where you're going, you're going to want to make sure that's in there. Um, I also bring a copy of that passport. Um, and I print out the welcome email from the office. Uh, it's got a lot of important information, also some phone numbers and, and uh, meetup times and things like that. If you do lose your phone, um, it's nice to have a paper copy. 
Um, so relatively compact, but it packs a punch. It's a nice little kit there. And finally, snacks. So um, while Alpenglow provides all meals while we're outside of the cities and we're in the mountains, uh, it's really nice to bring your own snacks and, and have a few of your favorite items. Um, so two to three pounds is about right for a one week or five to seven days in the mountains. And um, this is all personal preference. I'm not a huge fan of engineered food with the exception of, uh, of chewables like shot blocks. Um, so here I've got some, um, some gorp or some nuts, uh, a little bit of beef jerky, some salami and um, shot blocks, uh, some drink mix. This is the noon drink mix, fantastic stuff. I, I don't put it in all my water, obviously, but um, you know, one or two bottles throughout the day is really nice. When I'm in, when I'm in country, I'm traveling to Ecuador here. Um, I'll pick up some, some nice Ecuadorian chocolate and some cheese as well uh, to round this out. So again, two to three pounds is perfect for, for the Ecuador climbing school or five to seven days in the mountains. Um, and I've got two water bottles here. These are two one liter hard sided bottles. Uh, absolute must. I love compressible bottles and also Camelback systems as well, um, but they're susceptible to, to punctures or leaks and also freezing. Anything with a narrow mouth bottle is, is very, or, or the hose on the Camelback, very susceptible to freezing. So those would be in addition to the hard sided bottles because these are going to be the last to break or freeze. Um, I've got an insulated bottle right here. It's, it's a one liter as well. It's, it's pretty lightweight, but I can put some hot tea or coffee in here for the climbing day and that's, uh, that's a nice warm up when the sun pops up for us. To top things off, um, I've got an assortment of different size stuff sacks. And um, all this equipment, clothing, food, uh, et cetera, um, I'll pack into these stuff sacks so it's not full chaos in my duffel bags. Um, lightweight, sill nylon is fantastic. Um, so I, I recommend getting a few different sizes um, of stuff sacks. And that completes uh, all the, the individual components. So let's see if we can fit it all in a bag. <laughs>